Congratulations, John. Considering what happened in September, the layoff, the weight cuts, can you just describe the emotions that you're feeling after a win like that? I feel amazing. Like, I almost started crying in the octagon because, one, I had a bunch of fans sitting there saying that I haven't, I had lost that knockout way, I have a huge distraction with a new baby, this and that, and everybody was just kind of piling up all this negativity, and then I remembered, I'm awesome, so I should just blow that off. <laughs> so it was good going in. And how much of this performance is directly related to the fact that you didn't have to cut the extra 10 pounds and now you're fighting at a more natural weight? Well, it actually feels a lot better because now I can move around faster. I can be a lot lighter on my feet. And we also saw that I still have that knockout power. Yeah. So. How great was this week considering you didn't have to cut that extra weight? Did you, did you think back to when you were you know, fighting originally at 135 and said, this is amazing? Well, I actually started cutting weight the exact same way that I did for 25. So I came in lighter this week than I was supposed to, than I intended to. So I had to actually put on a little bit more, a little bit more weight, start eating a little bit more, so that my body could be healthy for the rest of this week. Did you realize right away you had him when you rocked him with the first shot? Well, as soon as I saw him stunned with the first, the very first one, I had, I had jumped on the opportunity to keep on going. He did have a land a solid strike, and that was that right, that overhand right that he threw, and it kind of clipped me on the top. What's your future hold the back weight? Title. I want to be a champion. Like, I don't come in here to try to be second place, and I definitely didn't want to do that at 25, so I'm moving up to 35. If I have to go back down to 25 so I can secure another uh, another title shot, I'll be more welcome to do that too. And how do you manage uh, the challenge of facing guys that are taller and longer reach? How do you plan on sort of addressing that? The taller? <laughs> That's news to me. If they're taller than me, you better let me know, because <laughs> shit, I think my arms are just as long as they are, and I'm just as tall. Now, if that doesn't matter, then I'm just as good looking at them, and then they definitely can't be beating this face up because I'm going to make them uglier than me. Is there anybody in particular you want to fight at Bantamweight next? Everyone. If you don't even care, you, I will pile up as many bodies as possible to get that title. So I don't care who they are. I'll step, if you step in front of me, just know that you're going to be laying down as my next victim. I hope this one would have secured it, but I guess not. You guys keep on asking that question like as if I didn't do good enough in this fight. 40, 40 seconds isn't good enough? Isn't it fast enough? Shh. I'll, put, I'll make sure the next one's in 12. How would you feel if they flipped you back against Dillashaw? <laughs> that'd be awesome because then that bitch could stop saying that it was a fluke that I knocked his ass out. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a fight next. Him and Asun Sao are probably, you know, the top two guys in the division okay. without a fight. Dillashaw seems to be the one that everyone's interested in, the rematch. You beat him, though, so do you even want the rematch? Of course, why not? The guy actually held the title. I want to show everybody that since he got the opportunity to hold the title, that I could beat the guy that had it. Again. <laughs> so the title is being defended in June, uh, so obviously that has to play out. Is Dillashaw the next best thing right now? Well, the next best thing is anybody that the UFC wants to put in front of me. I would love to fight Dillashaw because he keeps on telling everybody that it was a fluke, and it bothers me so much because he's so nice to my face and then tells every talk shit behind my back saying that I didn't hit him with a clean enough shot. I'll make sure the next one that I land will put him out and knock him out completely. What about the champ? You want the title shot right now? Like, what of do you course. Well, we've already seen the fact that Demetrius Johnson gave him so much problems being so much faster than what, D what Dominic Cruz is. The only thing that's different between me and Demetrius Johnson is that I actually have knockout power. I can actually land those shots that DJ landed, but give him more of a threat, hit him harder, and not only that, my hits are way better than his, so I definitely know I'm not getting taken down. Does a part of you regret that you ever went down to, to flyaway to begin with? Do you feel like you could be a champion already at 135 if you never did that? You know, I have no regrets in being at flyweight because I got to show everybody why flyweights are so amazing. They all sit there and say that flyweights are a women's division, that these are full-grown men fighting at a children's kid. Like, a lot of people sit there and say they've never seen that since they were their childhood. I got to show people that we have power, we have technique, we, are, we move faster in our division. In that division, it's so much better than watching heavyweights who get tired in like 10, 30 seconds and they dance around. At least with us, it's nothing but action that keeps on going forward. And not only that, there's so much technical details that go into our, our sport. What's your take on that, the new season of Tough that you're actually doing it basically for the next title shot you have, all these flyweight competitors vying for the next title shot? You know, for me, that's an awesome feeling because of the fact that the idea and the concept behind it is perfect. One of the times that everybody's going to sit there and bitch about it is because there's guys that are in the UFC that are complaining about, oh, I didn't get that shot. Well, shit, these are going to be the guys that are all different title holders. 
Like, these are not just some bums off the street trying out for the show. These are us all different champions in other organizations. And Demetrius Johnson has clearly sat there and said one too many times that he wants to declare himself the best 125er in the world. And if that's the case, then it's man up, it's pull your fucking nuts up, and hold it and sit there and say that I'm the best and fight in all the other champions. This is the only time that you two will be able to do it. Like, everybody always complains about there's a Bellator champion, this champion, that champion. They're not really the true champion until they have the UFC champion. Well, Demetrius is the UFC champion, and this Ultimate Fighter would have declared him being the overall champion of the best 125ers in the world. You don't consider him that already? Well, you know what? I did until he had sat there and said that he was too much of a pussy to fucking want to challenge to take the challenge to fight in all the best 125ers in the world. You mean what he said on his Twitch? Yeah, when he was sitting there saying that he did, he, granted, I give him mad props for sitting there saying <laughs> that me, that he hasn't faced tougher opponents than me and Joseph Benavides, and there's gonna be a lot of tough opponents out there, but. Isn't he giving you guys respect by yeah, saying that the tougher guys are in the UFC, not the ones who are not in the UFC already? He is, but at the same time, like, he's not gonna find anybody like us, but this is the only time that you'll be able to go ahead and sit there and say that you're fighting the best. Like, these are all champions. Me and, me and Joseph Benavides were the guys that came into this, like trying to be the best, and that's what he was doing. Now he gets a chance to sit there and shut up and silence the world by saying that he is the best 125er. And not only that, he gets to highlight a division that he wants to stay in. Like, if I was the champion right now, I would have jumped on board with it. I would even coach everybody. I would coach that whole season by myself and tell them, this is how you guys beat me. Because I want you guys to perform at your best and show that you are a worthy opponent for me. Like, if you're going to be the best, then show that me that I'm the best. You think he beats Cejudo next week? Well, I think that's an easy fight for Demetrius Johnson. Like, Henry Cejudo is an all-around great wrestler, but just being a, good, a great wrestler doesn't mean that you're the best MMA fighter. I've right. seen DJ walk through plenty of people that have the higher credentials than what Henry Cejudo has. And not only that, DJ's well, very unstoppable for us. I give, him the, the fa I give him the fact that he is, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. Is there something, is there like an emptiness in your heart that you didn't get that belt? Like even if you go up to 135 and win, will it always bother you that you didn't beat him, at least right now? It does bother me because of the fact that I haven't solved the riddle of what, of what Demetrius Johnson is. And it doesn't, it doesn't bother me as much as it like annoys me yeah. because of the fact that Demetrius Johnson is such a good athlete and everybody has a riddle and I haven't solved it yet.